Hey, what is going on guys? Talk Norris City here, back for another Predicted 11 video. Yes, these games just keep on coming at the moment and I bloody love it. Yes, it's Fulham up on Tuesday night at Craven Cottage. Uh, we all know our form at Craven Cottage. Go and check out my match preview, all the key facts and stuff in that. But uh, it's, it's going to be an interesting one. Am I looking forward to it? Of course I am. I'm buzzing for it. I'm feeling confident. And the team is always the, sort of the defining factor of if we're going to play well or not. Now, this is the team I'm going with um, in goal. Now, it's an interesting one, this, because Michael McGovern is a man I, I really respect with the work he's done for Northern Ireland. He's come in Norwich City and he's done exceptionally well. He's made some big saves at big moments. But at the weekend, I watched him. I thought, is this guy better than John Ruddy? You know, most of the season, I've been fully convinced that McGovern's the man to be in goal, and that's the reason I've been putting him in these preferred 11s all season. But I, I looked at that that goal that Rotherham scored at the weekend, and I just thought, that is poor, poor goalkeeping. He, I was right behind it. He, he either has to come for it or be set for the shot. He was kind of in no man's land, and it, it put a few thoughts through my head. But I think you've got to stay loyal to goalkeepers, otherwise they lose confidence. And I know John Ruddy... Um, I know John Ruddy was good in the cup, but I still think until Michael McGovern has an absolute shocker, and I suppose continued shockers, you've got to keep him in goal. Ruddy, you know, competition is is healthy, um, but McGovern for me does stay in there, and I really hope he, he improves uh, against Fulham because we're, we're going to need him on form because Fulham do actually have a really decent attacking line. The defence, um, I'm just going to roll with all of them, basically. Uh, it's an unchanged defence. It'd be impossible to... Um, to change it after their recent performances. I think our defence is really nice to actually look at a, look at a defence and go, actually, that's pretty decent, you know. Um, you know, Close and, and Martin are a really decent partnership. Olsen down the left is always dangerous and Pinto down the right is dangerous. And that's such a good championship defence. I think it would be all over the place in the Premier League. But with Pinto bombing forwards and really decent defence, it'll be the same with Olsen. You know, Close is a man mountain. You put anyone next to him and they'll look good. And I just think that's a really good defence for this league and, and the way we're playing football at the moment. I'm going to stick with the same formation as well. Uh, as, as you would have seen in my match preview, Johnny Housen is still out injured, which is a shame because he's one of the best players in our team and, and the league, really. But not to worry, uh, we've got suitable replacements in the middle. Graham Dorans goes in there for me. I actually highlighted him as one of the key players for us going into this game in my match preview. So go and check that out at the end of this video if you haven't already. Graham Dorans... Um, I actually dropped him from my last predict at 11, not knowing that Johnny Housen was injured. Um, but he went in there against Rotherham and, and once again performed so, so well. He's been such a, a, a you know, a, a, um, a consistent performer this season and a player who's really impacted us going forwards. I can remember the games against um, Sheffield Wednesday at home and Bristol City at home when it was Housen next to Tete. And it didn't look half as good as when Graham Dorans is in here. So next to him, I'm going to go with Alex Tete. He's already had four bookings this season so he's one uh, booking away from suspension so maybe if Housen's coming back for fitness get Tete booked in this game get him out for when Housen's back and that little one game suspension won't go adrift but I think that's actually a decent um, midfield partnership Graham Doran's sort of swaps role when Tete's next to him so Doran's can bomb forward and as we know Tete can can pick up the pieces um, drop it in I mean Tete we I really hope that Housen's back for the game against Preston because Tete's knees are going a bit and three games in a week could be a big ask for him now the 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 the, the attack in four is the is this is the positions where um there's been a lot of change but I'm actually going to stick with pretty much the same Brady is going to be back and is in contention but Pritchard was so so impressive on Saturday and you know, we've seen little glimpses of him and it, them glimpses have looked really promising, but he put all of that together so nicely on Saturday against Rotherham. Uh, that ball in for Houlihan's fantastic goal, his pace. Um, it doesn't quite take on his player as much as, as Robbie Brady, but that little pass in, uh, he's definitely got goals in him as well, is so much more impressive than Robbie Brady. And I'm not saying that Brady's a bad player, but I just think after his performance on Saturday and Brady only just returning from injury, it'd be very tough to drop Alex Pritchard. In behind the striker, uh, he, to be honest, even if he um, isn't fully fit and even if he is fatigued, he's still one of the best players in the league. Wes Houlihan, just an absolute beautiful man. That goal, I, I, I was watching it with Chris, obviously because Chris sits near me, uh, or stands near me because we're, we're Barkley boys. Um, you know, and I just turned around to him and I went, 
wow. Like it was one of them goals where you're just happy to be watching the game. It was such a special, special goal. And you know, I actually got the same feeling watching that goal that Wes Houlihan had um, to when I watched Messi on TV. It, it, you just didn't think it was possible. You know, that first man he turned, we've seen him do that countless times before. He turned his man, he was like, just shoot, just shoot. And then he turned back again. I was like, surely not. He turned back again, waited for him to slide, the goalkeeper to dive, and just to him, the way he tucked it in the bottom corner, it was honestly such a beautiful, beautiful goal. It was, it was fine art. It was that good. And Wes Hulan has been doing that his whole Norwich City career. And it's great to see the mainstream media and other fans finally realising just how good Wes Houlihan is because, because he's Wes Houlihan and because he plays for Norwich, he's not often in, in the news or other fans don't really know about him, but that goal went viral and rightly so. Such a special goal, such a special player and he gets in my start in 11. On the right-hand side, Jacob Murphy for me. Um, Jar Murphy, there we go. Um, I wasn't actually that impressed with him on Saturday. Um, didn't think he was that great, but he's been one of our key players this season and I think with young players, Jacob Murphy is going to have bad games this season, as with any young player in this league and as with any winger. You know, Nathan Redmond had poor games from time to time and he was worth £12 million and got his Premier League move. I like Jacob Murphy. I think, you know, he might do nine bad things in a game, but the one good thing he does could be the goal that wins you a game. And I think it'd be very unfair to drop him going into this game. So we'll see, but I wouldn't be overly surprised if Alex Neal did drop him, it all depends how he wants to manage the Murphy twins. Does he, you know, fill them with confidence, say, go out there? Or does he treat them a bit tougher and say, you were poor, work hard in training to get back into the team? I'm not too sure on that one. And then up front, Cameron Jerome. Um, honestly, so, so impressive this season. I know he misses chances, but he's a championship striker. He's going to do that, but he will get you goals in this league. And the most impressive thing with Jerome is the last two or three, maybe even four games, he has been winning every single header. And that is so important when you play as a lone man because you need to win them, them balls forward. You need to hold the ball up. And he's been doing that better than he's ever done in an Norwich City shirt before. So Jerome goes in there. Um, it is an unchanged team, but I wanted to talk to you about how good this team is, basically. Um, I suppose the question is, would you bring Brady back in for Pritchard? If so, why? Let me know in the comments. Would you bring... Uh, would you drop Jacob Murphy, maybe put in Canos or Josh Murphy? Canos is an interesting one, actually. Don't really know what's going on with him. I suppose it is Alex Neal just wanting to nurture him, not throw him in too quick. Uh, so does Jacob Murphy stay in there? Um, does maybe Bennett go in for Martin? I doubt that's going to happen. And do you drop Jerome? I doubt it. I mean, I, I don't think there's too many questions to ask going into the Fulham game in terms of the team. Jacob Murphy and Pritchard being the main sort of ifs or buts. Um, but that is my predicted 11. As always, a big thank you to Fritz Bits for sponsoring match preview content here on Talk Norwich City. I will be at Craven Cottage, so if you're there, come and say hi, get on the match day experience, come and have a fan cam after the game. See you at Craven Cottage. Big, big game. Thanks very much for watching and peace out. Hey, what's going on guys? Talk Norwich City here, back for another video. I hope you guys are doing really well as always. Um, back for my Fulham preview today. Yes, it feels like I've just this minute got home from Carrow Road after the Rotherham game. And in a few